in the market for performance slash luxury. Porsche of Clearwater has given us the 2022 Porsche Cayenne S in chalk. New this year is a turbo GT Coupe. That's a twin turbo V8 that produces 631 horsepower. Otherwise, updates are in the sixth generation for the PCM, which is your Porsche communication management or your infotainment screen. It's going to have wireless Apple CarPlay, finally getting Android Auto, improved clarity, and quicker route processing. In the interior, we're receiving some luxury. 14-way power adjustments, heated and ventilated front seats, room for five. On the exterior, you're getting the RS design wheels. PASM for your suspension, which is Porsche adaptive suspension management otherwise known as adaptive suspension rivals are your bmw x5 your mercedes gle 53 even an audi s q8 but what you're getting with this is a twin turbo v6 performance luxury durability and everyday use i'm anthony from hawkeye rides and i'm going to go over all the specs and details starting now The new Porsche Cayenne S definitely sets the athletic look in the front. LED headlamps with the black included the PDLS, which is Porsche Dynamic LED System. Working down the lower, you're going to get your LED turn signals, and I like that the vents are all in the gloss black on the exterior, but on the interior, they're on the matte black, so it kind of gives a little bit of a two-tone against the chalk. With ground clearance, that's going to be between seven and 9.6 inches, which is pretty much the best in class in today's comparison. And the fenders bulge out these 21 inch RS spider wheels. The disc reading at 390 millimeters for the front, the rear at 330 millimeters. That includes the wheel arches that are painted so you don't have the matte black covering them. Staggered wheels, six piston in the front, a four piston in the rear. You're gonna get the gloss black with the Porsche emblem. In the center, it's going to have the matte black and that's going to wrap around the rear bumper that has these sports housing quad exhaust outlets, blacked out tips, a diffuser. The width and the height of this is going to be shorter than the competition. Integrated Porsche 4D chassis control. What I do like is the adaptive air suspension or the PASM because this is going to make the ride a lot more smoother even with these upgraded 21 inch wheels. Everything gets the gloss black on the window treatment and on the roof rails and this is the smallest in length compared to to the rivals, 193.6 inches. A wheelbase, 113.9 inches. The lower roof spoiler. Gloss black is not here, which I do wish that that matte black was gloss. And I like the light bar because it just puts emphasis of the Porsche badging Cayenne S in the gloss black, which this should be all over the rear. Going inside to your cargo at 27.2 cubic feet. You can raise and lower the suspension on your right side. On the left, you'll have a 12 volt with a storage compartment. Underneath the floor, you have a spare tire tucked underneath and you can split fold the rear bench at a 40-20-40 split, maxing the cargo to 60.3 cubic feet, towing up to 7,700 pounds, twin turbo V6. Let's go inside this bad boy, start it up so we can hear that exhaust note. The new Porsche Cayenne S definitely has a nice sculpted styling on all four corners and it has a pretty decent exhaust note as well. Back in the performance with a 2.9 liter twin turbo V6 producing 
434 horsepower and 405 pound-feet of torque. That's paired to an 8-speed automatic transmission achieving 16 to 22 MPGs with the Sport Chrono package. Porsche says a 0 to 60, 4.6 seconds, otherwise 4.9 seconds. Quarter mile, 12.8 seconds. This is faster than the GLE 53, faster than the X5. Top speed, 164 miles per hour. So you got the dynamics underneath you, twin turbo V6 performance, the luxury you're about to see. Let me know in the comments what you think about the 2022 Porsche Cayenne S as we go into the interior, go over the tech and take this for our test run. Entering inside the Porsche Cayenne S, you're gonna receive nearly 40 inches of headroom and almost 40 inches of legroom, which is pretty good and right at the point of best in class. Black leather bucket front seats, they're heated and we have ventilated. Plus we have 14 way power adjustment for the passenger and driver with three way memory Porsche badging in all of the headrests. So I do like that we're getting that sporty design encased in the seats. I kind of wish it was a different color or maybe have some contrast stitching so it pop a little bit because we have the chalk seat belts. Maybe add chalk contrast stitching, which you can do that because Porsche will tailor it any which way you like. It's a flat dash and you got the gloss black. Your air vents on the side are going to be large and the center is going to be a little bit more seamless. That's underneath this infotainment screen. This is the sixth generation of your PCM touchscreen 12.3. So we have a pinch, sort of. It works and it kind of glitches, but we do have the swipe as well. Click into the home button so you can see that we have a lot of apps. Swipe to the right and there's your wedges. Swipe back and slide down so you can see all the apps in which we have. Apple CarPlay is wireless. Android Auto is wired. Over the air updates. Click into that little car that's on the left. Here you can go through your driver select so you can make it as sport derived as you want. Click into your assistance and you can alter some of the safety features. Click into your trip. This will tell you every single thing about the vehicle, your average speed, how long you've been driving, your distance and whatnot. Click into your comfort and here you can change and configure your ambient lighting to make it a little bit more pleasing to your desire. You can click into your driver's seat so you can adjust your ventilated balance or your heated balance. Now we're going to switch it to reverse. You have a 360 degree camera, full trajectory, and you can also change the camera positions to make it easier for your reversing. Working down, you're going to get a full gloss panel that's touch derived. So I do like how everything is pretty much mapped out for you and it's pretty easy, but it's kind of like an airplane in the sense of you're going to be playing with the switches for the first couple of days. You've got an area you can fit a larger cell phone right underneath the Cayenne badging. The oh my god handles on both sides. So they're kind of mimicking the Mercedes. Cup holders, a 16.9 ounce fits without any issues. I'd say maybe a 32 with a 12 volt. It's going to be more sport derived for all of the elbows on all panels, even the center cluster. Open up inside. You got two USB C ports, your wireless charging pad, and a little storage tier. Steering wheel is leather wrapped, three spoke. It is sport derived, multi function paddle shifters. The stocks, I do like that they added the gloss. I kind of wish it was all over it instead of a matte and a gloss, but it does have a pretty nice little effect. The gauge cluster has a digital readout on the right side. You can go through an array of information for the driver. You can do your navigation and you can also do your night vision. On the other side, you can change different settings. And in the middle, the analog tachometer with the heads up display. So we are pretty much taken care of in the sense of technology. They're finally implementing it in the Cayenne. And what I mean by that is the technology is faster, a little less glitch. So it makes it a little bit more precise in what we need it to do. Door panel is going to be harder materials on the top. You're going to get the gloss black. Soft closed doors, ambient lighting, one touch up and down for all of your windows. The grab handle is huge. I do like that it matches the center. Door pocket, huge for storage. You can fit a lot of 16.9 ounce bottles. So you don't really have to worry in the sense of throwing snacks, water bottles, soda. If you're carrying a family, you can do that with performance. Let's see how I look in the back. For the back seat, headroom for a six foot three is no issue, nor is leg room. If I'm looking at this in the rival perspective, I actually have a substantial amount of head and leg space in the rear. Comparing it to the rivals, BMW will be about the same. Mercedes is going to be 
a little bit less in the headroom. Elbows are only gonna be soft in the center. I don't necessarily like how this sits because you can see the bottle falls. You could probably fit a 20 ounce without any issue. The reason why though that it sits like this is because this is adjustable. So you can adjust it back and then it sits almost level. It's still a little bit up. So you're not really gonna find a happy medium with it because the way it is. But I do like the fact that it's wide in the back. Your dual climate control settings in the rear, a 12 volt, two USB-C ports, and a storage tier on the bottom. Air vents are gonna be in the center and on the side pillars. The floor is not completely flat. Harder materials behind the seat, but you got storage behind both of them. So we can let a few things slide because it's a little bit easier to wipe off. And it actually feels like a vinyl. So I do like the fact that they put something other than just hard plastic. Door panels, gonna be hard materials on the top and where you rest your elbows. The gloss black comes in between. You get the large grab handle, one touch up and down for your windows, another large pocket with your Bose sound system. So storage capacity, you could fit quite a bit in the back seat. It's not necessarily small. I would definitely say that it's more than the Mercedes. It's right about the same as the BMW. If you're comparing it to the Audi, that one's gonna be the most. Let's see how I look in the center. Sitting into the center, headroom is still no issue, nor is a leg room. I am sharing feet but shoulder space because the floor is not completely flat. I am blocking all the central vents and everything basically that takes care of you. However, you do have your side air vents, so you're still taken care of with that. A large pano that comes all the way behind my head and it is wide too, so I do like that you can get a lot of vitamin D inside. The nice thing about the Porsche Cayenne is you're getting the dynamics underneath the hood, you're getting the new technology, you have the safety, it's lifted up nearly 10 inches of ground clearance, you still got cargo, towing capacity, fit five. So this is a sports car for a modern family. Taking the 2022 Porsche Cayenne S out for a test run. And the nice thing about the Cayennes is you are lifted up pretty good. The seat comfort is pretty nice. You hear the exhaust note when you're in sport mode which is good, no dual pane windows, 21 inch wheels, they're staggered. So it's gonna be a little bit more expensive on maintenance, but it's also good for cornering purposes. As for visibility in the front, the front windscreen does a pretty good job. It's sleek, it's not too overpowering. The A-pillars are not too chunky and they've added the extended windows right here on the door panel so you can see very well in the front. As for the rear, there's some blind spot. You got blind spot monitoring. And you also have twin turbo V6. So, I mean, you're not gonna have issues. Plus you got the brake, so look at this. I gotta stop on a dime, I can do so. I need to speed up, I can do so. Performance, luxury, and the new technology. 434 horsepower, 405 pound-feet of torque, turn radius, about two lanes, and give her a go. She stays nice and comfortable. The note dies though. Give it some on the interstate. It's the only thing that I would say that I wish Porsche made a little bit more aggressive. And yes, if you go up the tiers, it gets a little bit better, but Porsche is not necessarily known to give a loud exhaust note, especially in their SUV. So it is quiet, upgraded 21 inch wheels. You're gonna expect to hear a little bit of noise any way you cut the cake. Now there is three things I like, three things that I dislike. Is anything more than that? I'd be buying this vehicle. The three things that I like about it is the fact that we now have the upgraded sixth generation for the technology. There's a flip side to that, and the reason why I say there's a flip side is because Audi technology is awesome and Porsche is always a few years behind, and it would be nice to see it spot on. The second thing that I like about the vehicle is you have towing capacity almost 8,000 pounds. 7,700 pounds is quite a bit for a performance vehicle twin turbo 2.9 liter V6. That's insane, and it's also incredible because I'm getting numbers in the mid four seconds. The last thing that I like about it is the comfort to the ride. The air suspension is it just makes it more of a happy medium. Plus, 
you can alter it to make it more aggressive. Getting up onto the interstate. Blind spot monitoring, it's right there so it's easy to see. It's a little bit longer of a vehicle, but it's not to the point where I can't see if I look back. Three things that I dislike has to start off with some of the charms are Volkswagen and when I'm in an 80 or a hundred plus thousand dollar vehicle, I don't really want to hear that. The second thing that I dislike, the gauge cluster, I like it. I got the night vision, super cool. We got the heads up display, yeah, but just throw a digital gauge reader just like Audi. So that way we're right on top with the technology, but we're going to give her a little go and here we go. You're going to get to work quick. You're going to get the kids to school fast. You don't have to worry about that. The last thing that I dislike about the vehicle is there's a lot going on in the center here with buttons. It would be nice to make it summed up and just throw it into a second screen like they did the Audi. So that way, again, the price point, you can pretty much get an RS Q8 base at what you're looking at with features. And that's a little bit more performance drive. If you're comparing it to the rivals, the BMW X5 does a great job in the interior space, very comfortable. You're going to have more power seat adjustments in that and in the bins. As for towing, if you step up to the M, you're not going to be able to tow anything. Mercedes is pretty decent with that, so it's more or less spot on with the capabilities there. As for the noise, Quietness in the cabin actually will be this. This is the most quiet unless you are looking into the Audi line. The drive comfort and the dynamics, I mean, it's gonna be a bit boaty looking, but it actually stays relatively planted. The steering wheel is gonna be heavier, so I do like that you get the performance in the driver's side. And it does feel a little bit more sporty and athletic. When you go to the bins or the Beamer, you're going to have to put it in full sport mode to get the same weight in the steering. Red light, got it in sport mode, paddles, here we go. And hard brakes. Almost like an airplane when you hit the brakes, the sound that it makes but definitely a fun vehicle. Everyday vehicle, yes. Something that you can take on a long journey, definitely. Comfort, you're there. Storage capacity, you're taken care of. Porsche does an excellent job with that. The 2.9 liter V6 twin turbo is definitely the trim that I would recommend. If you go to a lower trim first, it may be sufficient, but once you drive this, it's going to feel like a little bit less in the performance line. This one does have a little bit of lag, but you got to consider the size of the engine. When you're looking at it from the rival perspective, they're going to be a little bit more engaged as you go up the tier. I like to thank Porsche of Clearwater for giving us this 2022 Porsche Cayenne S for our car review. If you're already a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Hawkeye community. If not, click the next video, the subscribe button. Check out the details, the merchandise, the website, and everything we do here at Hawkeye Rides.